Uh, welcome everybody to Grow Mastermind Group. We are a group of entrepreneurs that are here to encourage, uh, encourage other entrepreneurs to discover, fulfill, and unleash their potential. This being said, welcome everybody. And um, I want everybody to be part of our group. If you're not subscribed here to our WhatsApp group, to our Facebook, please do so. And this being said, I want to welcome our amazing guest tonight, Mr. Antonio White. And uh, I would like to give him the opportunity for to, he, to himself, to introduce himself, to say, because I think he knows more and he can express himself uh, better than I do about uh, his unbelievable journey to the point where he is right now. So, Mr. Antonio, please take, uh, take over. Well, uh, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me on the call. Appreciate all of you guys for showing up. You know, the very first words out of your mouth are the ones that are the most anticipated and hopefully uh, the ones that have the most impact. So my, uh, my intention here for you today is to share a $100 million pitch framework with you today. Does that sound like it's something that you guys be interested to hear how that whole approach works? Okay, good. All right. So now that I've pitched you on what we're going to be going on for the, for the show, uh, let's get started here with a little bit of insight from you guys. Uh, I'd like to understand who I'm talking to right now. I'd like to get, maybe, maybe can you even give me your kind of current pitch a little bit since there's not very many people on this call. Well, actually there's a good amount here. You guys are a good amount, my, but my, uh, we have an opportunity here with, with this group of people. We can actually run through a few pitches perhaps with you guys and maybe even get some, some personal one-on-one -on -one coaching for you too. So I'd love to get a sense here. Maybe Kathleen, maybe you'd like to start, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what's your, what's your, what's your pitch? Let me unmute yourself. Oh. Sorry, eating. I was just on the, the conference, you know, that 10 X challenge for two and a half hours. Yeah. And I cook dinner and I'm like low blood sugaring because I'm on a, I'm on a cleanse. So, uh, so forgive me for eating. So, listen, I've been I've been in the sunglass business for 29 years. Um, I did shows, events, military bases, and I also we started off road siding 29 years ago. I was in co college in Boston, so we started off with the blue blocker thing. I don't know if you ever you remember the blue blocker. So um, hey hey hey, are those blue blockers? These are <laughs> a fabulous 51 year old self now. I remember the commercial. Hey, are those blue blockers? I know, right? I so know, it was yeah. just a fantastic ride and we expanded and um, I ended up getting 13 sunglass stands and we would travel around the United States and then we ended up getting polarized and our whole thing was we went from the first generation to the second generation to the third generation and the third generation is just this crystal clear and sharp high definition blue blocking lens. Fast forward 29 years later, COVID, Sunglasses shut down, no, sh no shows, no events, no military bases. So I've been um, in four mentorship groups with GC and I've been in the marketing with Alan, his marketer, and I'm getting the website built. But I, I know, I know that it's not going to be, I'm going to have to get funnels, this and that. But I have this vision. I have this vision of, of like blue blocker size epicness, funnel, pitch, hard to break, lightweight, shatterproof. 100% UVA, UVB, break them, scratch them, sit on them, mail them in. So, you know, I have a, I have a pitch. I have an older pitch. What I want- I'd love to, to hear it, Kathleen, whenever you're ready. Okay, good. So basically, um, so the original pitch was like, have you, ever, have you ever heard of blue block? Put them on. I had two towels. One was red, one was blue. Put them on. What colors do you see? I see red and green. Now take them off and look, oh my God, it's blue. Well, the reason why is blue scatters in the red lens of your eye, causes squinting, hazy, uncomfortable vision. That's the first generation. Then we have the second. Now we have the third. If you put these on and look, what color is the towel now? It's blue. Now take them off and look, oh my God, it, it's so clear and sharp. Great. See that windshield right there? Now put them on and look into the windshield. <gasps> Oh my God, I can see right through the windshield because usually there's just like a cloud or something. So my whole, my whole thing is I was always outside visually actually doing my pitch to mass crowds of people and they would just be like buying them because they're like, oh my God, this is incredible. So that's sort of like, a, you know, the overview of the pitch, but I need to now develop a pitch that I can do online through a funnel and have them buy stuff. 
Okay, cool. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Hey, wait, Solana Whitehead and Dell are on this call. There are no snooper models available on the, you guys can't be on this call. This this call, this is not the uh, this is not the elite call. This is the VIP, this is the double VIP call. But there's another level even higher. We should just be listening to you guys for crying out. What are you guys talking in for me for? My goodness. Good to see you guys. <laughs> Love you guys. Great to see you. Great to see you. All right. Look, Kathleen, uh, that, that's a great look. You gave me a lot of prefacing. And uh, that's a lot of prefacing and uh, like three chapters of prefacing here. I didn't exactly get to hear your pitch yet here, but let's, let's make a point of trying to get you a pitch today. How's that sound? Would that be good for you? Would you like to get a pitch together today? Awesome. Very good. Steven, I know you, you know what's going on here. Tell me, give us what you're doing today. What, what is your, what's your current pitch that you're working with? Yeah, Steve, what's, what's your pitch? What are you doing? We got to unmute him. Needs... I got to unmute you? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Did I unmute you? I'm unmuted. There you go. So pitch depends on who I'm talking to. Um, yeah. Specific what's, your, what's your most profitable customer? Give me your most profitable pitch right now. What's, what's the one that you make your money on? Customer is somebody who's owned an apartment building for 20 years. They've seen incredible value growth. Um, they're older and they're scared because now their management's getting more intensive because it's harder to run a building because people are out of work and it's struggle to, to get rent. The cash flow is dropping. So what I offer is whether you're buying, selling, or holding, I can help you make more money. Um, it doesn't matter what point of, a, of an ownership cycle something, somebody's in, but there's always a way to tweak the property. If they want to hold it, I'll help them make more so that one day when they sell, I hope to earn their business. You know, I'm not a one-call closer. I've got to talk to some people for a decade before they close because they're, they're, they're not buying, they're not selling, they're not holding. It's apartment buildings. I hear you. I hear you. Forever. Great. That yeah. sounds, that sounds good. I, I like, okay. Gotcha. 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 All right. Yeah, so, Hey, so Hey Doug, go, go ahead. So if you got me on the phone here and I'm your customer here, what are you, what are you telling me when, when you get me on the phone? Hi, it's Steve Drew from Marcus and Millichap. The reason for my call is I help apartment building owners, whether you're buying, selling or holding, make millions more. Be sure I'm not, uh, I'm to be sure I'm, I, I'm making the best use of your time. Let me ask you, How's your property performing? All right. Very good. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Very good. Hey, Doug V. What's happening, Doug V? What's happening? Andy DeLavara on the call. Carolina, what's happening? All right. Good. So, that, so soon. So what, why did you show up on this call here? You know what's going on. Why are you on this call today? Hold on. Is he still on mute? I got to meet you again. Go ahead. Tell me why you're on this call. So um, be, I want to know why the hell you're on this call, as a matter so, of fact. So I've never heard your spiel. <laughs> I, everybody loves you. I hear about you all the time. People <laughs> rave about you. And out of everybody that's been hosting these calls, because Sunday nights are really, I met with Peter recently. Sunday nights are really brutal for me to get on a call. Um, Mad respect for you. you. You you have people's attention. I couldn't wait to hear. We well, appreciate you. We appreciate you. All right. Well, let, let, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, with you and Kathleen today, I think is our game plan here. So Doug V, what's happening with you, baby? You good? Hold on. You're on. You're on. I am. You got to unmute yourself. There, you, there go. you go. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me now? How are you, handsome? Hey, dude. I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> My business. Since I met you. I got to pinch myself at least daily. <laughs> Everything is just like actually exploding. It's really how, how, how is the financial EKG doing? <clears throat> really, really well. I actually I hired Robert Sissel about three months ago and we're kind of blowing a few things up and I've got about four coaching clients right now and I'm actually kind of holding the rest back, but it's yeah, everything's been going really well. I'm so glad to hear. I'm so happy to see you on the call, brother. Yeah, it's great to see you. All right. Donna. Hey, let's hear a pitch. Can, Solana, Dell, can, can you guys give us a little a little pitch here, what you guys are doing over at, at, at Fluzzle Tube? Hold on, listen, let me unmute you here so folks can see 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 some 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 pitch freaks in action here. <laughs> what, what, tell, tell folks about what you guys are doing on the pitch side. Hey, awesome. Well, uh, 
We are just coming off of uh, the pitch contest called the Big Find with QVC and HSN. So that's been, uh, that was the big one about a couple weeks ago. So that was the one that uh, we, um, it, was, it was probably the, the most challenging. We had a panel, it was kind of like uh, American Idol. Um, you know, that like, like Steven said, there's a different pitch for different people, but this was a, this was a big stage and, um, and it had the whole zoom environment, but, uh, yeah, we got to, sh we got to share the solution and, uh, the success of, of this past year in the midst of COVID, what we started with and what we ended up with. And that was our pitch. It was pretty much a story and the end and what we had gone through. Love it. Love it. Love it. And how did you guys do? Uh, it was uni unanimous. We got yeah. uh, four uh, big fine tickets. So we are we are just waiting for the uh, buyer to work out the contract with us and uh, and see and see what that's involved. So love it. Yes, but love it. you're amazing. We're here because uh, we love you. You you were amazing to us in the very beginning when we were in the 10x mentor program. You spent so much time with us, just really understanding. Um, well, our message and how to perfect it and get it in front of even the 10x pitch in Vegas. And um, we are uh, always indebted to you. So we're, we're here to support and, uh, and share, share the love. You're amazing. Yeah. We love, oh my gosh, appreciate you guys so much. You guys have been working so hard. You guys have like three major pitches you guys did. You guys did the Camping World pitch. You guys sell the yes. beautiful fuzzle tubes for folks who don't know fuzzle tube. So it's amazing fuzzle tubes. It's just incredible invention that they came up with. Uh, and you won the uh, Camping World pitch. That's Marcus Lemonis's company, Camping World. Uh, and then you did the 10x pitch here, and you crushed that uh, as well. And then you did the HSN uh, QVC pitch. Everybody wants to be on QVC on the planet, right? And you yeah. crushed that here. <laughs> so could you give folks a little bit of a tip, maybe from your pitch freak experience, a little bit here about some insights so people aren't just hearing it from me. What is it maybe about the pitch freak approach or what have you that you've kind of applied to your business to kind of help people get in the right mindset today? Yeah, so um, I want to say what, what you add, what you added to us or to, to help us to get prepared or get more understanding is really the framework of, of the pitch. So everybody knows their product, but sometimes I don't know if you've heard people say like you're you're looking too close to the frame like you kind of pulled everything back and really pull, pulled the pieces together so we could see one the solution that it provided but who we were talking to what who the audience is and how we need to frame that to that specific audience to get the result that we want the product's amazing people love that but they really want to hear they want to hear about you and your story and how you're going to represent to you know that that product and that's what you opened um our eyes too, and really, uh, your energy is is what's amazing, Antonio. <laughs> your energy and and your 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 realness, and you just you truly care, and you want people to succeed, and uh, that's what drew us to you, um, and your experience, and you know, obviously, what you say when put into action works. You definitely have to put it into action. There's homework. There's uh, practice. There's you know, uncomfortableness, all of that stuff, nervousness, we had to get through. We still are, even, even the QVC HSN, it's not like we were, we're professionals yet, still. Still nervous, still say uh and um, working through that. Uh, we're, not, we're not perfect at all, but um, you are just a great person to have in our corner and you've taught us so much and um, we thank you. Hey, I didn't mean you guys to pitch for me here. The Sorry. whole idea. I can't help it, I can't help it. We appreciate I mean, it's all good. <laughs> Sorry guys, yes, but thank you. He's amazing. If anybody's on this call and you're, you don't know Pitch Freak or anything about him, you're in the right place. If you're looking to perfect and uh, get your skills down, he's he's an amazing, amazing person to be connected to. I appreciate thank you guys you. so much. Hey, look, Jeff, Jeff, the entrepreneur is on the call. <laughs> Peter, you didn't tell me this was going big time today. You, I think you said you're just going to have a couple friends over here. We're going to have a little chat here. You did not tell me it was going to be a big time call today. I would have worn like a tie. I would have worn, you know, pants, uh, you know, this, I didn't realize this is going to be that this big, but Jeff, the entrepreneur, Jeff, how are you, baby? Hold on. Let, let, let we got to say, Jeff is crushing it out there. Are you, can you, can you get, get on this for a second? Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm crushing it because of you, Antonio. Seriously. I know everybody, dude, you have something about you. That's why I'm here right now. That really just, it, 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 you simplified everything and turned it all around. I was always in growth minded. I mean, it's so simple. Probably the reason why I'm Amazon Prime in two weeks is because of you. 
you totally made me, who's very wordy, right? I talk a lot, right? I also got a speaking gig in San Juan coming up. All because you made me, and I kind of flipped your thing, your um, value, emotion, subtle call to action, which I don't, I don't know if you're going to get into that. I yep. switched it to emotion, value, subtle call to action because I, I do a connection. It just, it worked for me. And it, not everything. Certain people, you got to do value. You got to read the people, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, uh, a lot of my, my coaching business blew up during COVID. I always was a coach, but I was afraid to go out there. And dude, literally you, man, um, like, I can't wait to have you on the Make More Money podcast. I mean, listen, I, I say it's like out of the draft, right? Out of the draft of that 10X mentoring group. We had Ken Jocelyn, Mike Searock, a lot of, lot of th- uh, things. You were like that, that like late round draft pick that nobody knew about who just kills it everywhere, man, just to put it in there. So, um, yeah, dude, blowing it up. And a lot of it's because of you, man. I, I did a webinar, my first webinar, I cried after. I'm doing another one in three weeks. But I had your face up there of people you pick them in your life of a team who's in, uh, you know, and everybody knows, um, you know, it just, dude, it's just unbelievable. So that's, that's it. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'll Appreciate up you, brother. So good, happy to see you here. And let, let's, let's get into it a little bit. Shall we here? Okay. We got, we got enough. We got enough for this year. This, this is a uh, Michelangelo. Oh my God, Michelangelo. Good to see you. Carolina. Good to see you. Sebastian. Good to see you. Tony C. We've got uh, Aisha, Christian. Fantastic. Troy Golden, Eden, Eden. Oh my, is that Eden? Is that, is that Eden? My Eden? Is that my Eden on the call? Hold on. Hold on. Is that my Eden on the call? I want, I want to hear that. Is that, is that my Eden? Yes or no? Yes, it's me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to turn this video on. Hold on a second. I look Come like on I'm now. Listening. Come I'm on. Gonna, this is crazy. I'm going to put my video on real quick. This is Give crazy. This is crazy. All right. Th- where is she? How are you? How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. How are you? You are totally crushing it. What has? All right. Oh so my Eden, God! I am you, trying. <laughs> tell us what's going on with you here since you started pitch freaking. Oh my God! A lot is going on. Like you guys said, this guy helped me through a lot, like during COVID and everything, to figure out how to pitch, who to pitch it for, and all that kind of stuff. So I was trying to organize that, and I'm trying to launch a new business with a beauty care company. Love it. So yeah, I'm gonna work. I'm working with a new pitch. You gotta help me with that. You got it. You got it. Awesome. Yeah, love it. I love you. So happy to see you. Okay. Look, you guys, let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, who wants to know the three steps to make a $100 million pitch? Okay. There's only three of them. There's only three. All right. Step number one is, and by the way, Jeff, the entrepreneur, said that you can change these things approach, and you can. There's, there's some adaptability for this, but there's three things that you need before you can do this. And by, but by the way, there's only one insight. I used to think there was three reasons why people don't buy from you. And then I thought, well, actually, there's two reasons why people don't buy from you. But actually, there is only one reason why people don't buy from you. Do you know what that reason? Anybody have an idea what that reason might be? What's the, oh, there's only one. There is only one. There's only one reason why people don't buy from you. Who has an idea what that reason might be? Kathleen. Oh, hold on, hold on. Kathleen, what? what uh, it, it, type it in the chat. I want. I want to type it in the chat too. But Kathleen, tell me if you if you can tell me. You're unmuted here. Tell me what you think. What's the reason? Um, I think it's that you don't you don't solve solve a problem, but they might not even be aware of that problem. So I think that you have to make them aware and then solve that problem. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're pretty close. Pretty close. Anybody want to take another stab? Who wants to take a stab? Who wants to take a stab? So close, Kathleen. So close, Carolina. Hold on. Let's get you unmuted here, Carolina. What do you think? I think it's a lack of clarity in the services or products that we provide. Ooh, lack of clarity. Very good. Very good. Not quite, not quite it though. Not quite it. Not quite. Anyone else want to take a stab? Kelly is very good though. Very good. Who wants to, nobody wants to take a stab. Nobody. Nobody. Hold on. Okay. All right. I'll give you the answer. Here's the answer. You're not sold on your pitch. That's it. You're not sold on your pitch. Think about it here. The clarity here comes from you being clear and sold on your pitch. You might say, well, what if they don't have the money? Well, how many people do you know go get loans to buy things that they can't afford? Money is not the problem. Steven, people buy properties, big, gigantic apartment buildings with money they don't have. Right? Right. Time. People might say times. They don't have the time. Not true. If something is valuable enough, you make time. You guys showed up to this call today. It's Sunday night. You got the NBA game on. You guys are busy people. You guys showed up, which I'm very grateful for, by the way. I thought it's just going to be me and Peter hanging out today here. You know, that'd be fun too. That's okay. It's all good. 
<laughs> so look, it's not about time because if you, if you have enough value incorporated into what you're doing, right, people will find the time if they find value in it. If, if they don't have the money, they will find the money. So the only thing is that you are not sold on your pitch. That's the only reason, right? And so my objective for you today, if I can do one thing today for you guys, is to get you into the mindset of getting sold on your pitch. If you are not sold on your pitch, nobody else will be. They're not going to make time for you. They're not going to go find money for you. You've got to be sold on your pitch. The first person that's is sold is you, okay? So, and, and the way to get sold on your pitch is for you to find the value in your own business, in your own product, in your own service. If you are not connected and know that this thing that you offer provides meaningful, deep, measurable value to your customers, if you don't think that that's the case here, then you either got to get with the program and figure that out, or you need to find a new program, find a new product. Not all products are things that you need to be selling. Not all systems or solutions or services are things that you should be selling. The thing here is that you can sell anything. The question is, can you sell more of it? Can you sell it for a higher margin? Can you sell it faster? When I was doing a lot of Silicon Valley launches back in the day in the, in the mid nineties, uh, one of the things that brought companies to us after they got their venture funding was that we could do fast launches. So we were able to do launches in 90 days. The average launch back in the nineties was around 60, uh, a six month launch. And we were able to come up with a window for doing a launch, a full on launch for a venture back startup in, in 90 days. And then we were able to even do one in 30 days. And the whole key approach for this, and you know when you talk about a company that gets millions of dollars in funding to launch in 30 days with all the people that are involved, it's, and, and a new technology, a very difficult technology, because all, these were all technology companies back in the day that, that I was working with. If you're introducing a really complicated technology, you have to focus on the value for the customers who are going to buy it. And so part of the big benefit, what I want to talk to you guys about a little bit today, is the value from the customer's perspective. And I also want to talk to you about opportunity. So, so Stephen, for you, anytime you guys are focusing on large dollar, high, high ticket, high stakes pitches, you really want to focus on opportunity. What is the opportunity for the person who is going to give you money? So whether it's a high ticket customer or you're asking somebody for money, investment money, you need to communicate to them the opportunity of being involved with you, being connected with you, being a part of what you're doing. And so that opportunity, especially with Kathleen, what is the opportunity for getting involved with your business? All right. How many of you guys are looking just for a key important customer versus actually maybe even looking for funding right now? Is anybody looking for funding on this call? Kathleen, you're looking for funding? Okay, perfect. Good. So we're going to talk with you here. So if I'm an investor and I got a bunch of money here and I'm looking for something to do with it. Oh my gosh. Are you got, you're not going to believe this. Do you see who's calling me right now? Do you see who's calling me right now? Marshall, Marshall, <laughs> Marshall, what are you, I'm on a Zoom call right now with a bunch of VIP people. What, what are you doing? What? I'm, doing. what? I'm, I'm, I'm calling you back. Say hello to everybody on the Zoom call. What are you doing, guy? <laughs> hey, Marshall. Follow Marshall on Instagram. Follow him everywhere here. He is a absolute monster here. Marshall, we'll follow up with you soon, baby. All right. All right. So, so look, the opportunity is really clear. If you're trying to get money from an investor, you have to focus on the opportunity. And the opportunity has to come from an investor mindset. Here is a key thing that almost everybody forgets when they're asking for money or they're trying to get business from somebody. And that is, what is it that benefits them rather than what is it that I do? So a lot of people go into a description about what they do. Here's what I do. Here's who I am. Here's what I represent. Michelle Mupo. Oh my God. You've got to be kidding me. This is serious people. Now I got to really give my A game here. This is like, I didn't realize I was going to be tested like this. This is, this is too big. So you've got to focus on what it is for the customer. So from an investor mindset, you need to put your investor hat on. So Kathleen, why are you investing in your business? Why are you spending all this energy and time and money and, and all the mentor calls that you're involved with? Why are you doing it? What's the big return? What's the market opportunity? If you're looking for an investor, they need to know what the market opportunity is, right? So there is a total addressable market, which is called TAM or TAM, right? 
total addressable market, how many people could buy this product of all the people on the planet, all the people in the market, what is the total addressable market? Right? And of that, who is gonna be your first person? Who's gonna be your first customer? Who's gonna give you a dollar and why? I want you guys to, to think about large and then micro, the macro and the micro, okay? So for instance, in this blue blocker, blue blocker sold a lot of glasses. So Kathleen, so I wanna know why are you spending any time and energy on this new sunglass product? Why, why should, why are you spending time on it? What do you think the opportunity is? Well, I'm not, I'm not selling blue blockers, but I am selling my own thing. And the reason why I think there's a huge opportunity is because the business model doesn't work anymore, right? Explain so, the business model. So the business model was um, shows, events, um, military bases, hustling, traveling all the time, big, big gatherings, lots of people, quick pitching money, quick, quick, quick quantity. Um, and that that's, you know, listen, so I got to pivot. So my, oh, but, but tell me what the business model is. What's the business model? My, well, my business model now, I'm, I'm kind of working it out. Um, I'm getting a website built and working on a funnel and a landing page. And I, my idea that I have, I think the thing I want to start with first, this is super hard to break glass. And I can have this made in, in any kind of style. Um, and I can have it with a high definition blue blocker. I can have the gray. But the benefit is people break scratch, lose glasses all the time. So we can, we can have a great product. We could make the price points 40, 50, even more. I mean, it could, we, there's a lot we could play with there. Um, I just see this as a way to kind of help people have a great product at a good price, protect their eyes, see crystal clear and sharp. Um, and there's millions of people on the planet. And from doing this for so many years, I can tell you there's a lot of people out there who just always break, lose and scratch their glasses. And I've always been around that $40, $50 price point. And, and I have cheap, cheap, cheap ones too for when we do the big shows, but that's not what I'm focusing on. So that's just sort of my concept, you know? Okay, I've got you. Quick question for you. So uh, do you mind if I have a little back and forth with you here so folks can get an idea kind of how this whole thing works? Sure. Okay, cool. All right. So the first thing I want you to do here is I want to figure out how we're going to articulate value from your from the perspective of your customer, right? Okay. Rule. There's three three rules here. Rule okay. number one: articulate your value from your prospect's perspective, from your customer's perspective. Oh, yeah. What is the value that they receive when they experience your product or service from their perspective? Okay. Why? Okay. Number two is emotion, incorporating emotion into your pitch. And what I want you to figure, think about is what is it that, they, that the, your customer is going to feel emotionally deep inside as a result of experiencing your product or service, right? Okay. And so for you, there's a difference between the, some, somebody who's going to be in a retail environment and buy something off the rack, right? Versus a distributor who is going to be offering or a retailer who's going to be offering your product for sale, two different pitches, Right. So you need a distributor pitch, a retailer pitch and a customer pitch. Okay. You need three pitches and you need an investor pitch. You need four pitches and you need a partner pitch. You need five pitches. Who thought that the average company needs five unique pitches? By the way, if you're going to bring on employees, you need another pitch. You need six pitches, Hiring right? Pitch. Hiring pitch, right? Six pitches, and we haven't even got started. We're, we're, we're 35 minutes in the call. We already got six pitches we need to come up with, <laughs> right? So let's, we need to get you some money first, right? So, so here's, here's the challenge you guys have. A lot of folks, and, and by the way, this is all family on this call here, okay? So when, if I give you a hard time here, it's out of, out of uh, it's a good natured ribbing and it's out of love. Never want to hurt anybody's feeling. Never want to make feeling, anybody feel bad here. I always want to lift everybody up. So, but I do a little teasing here for, for fun, okay? So for, for you, you started your pitch talking a, a lot about the broken business model, but I didn't actually hear what the business model is, right? You talked about funnels. You talked about getting your website up. You talked about these different things that you're doing, right? But what I want to hear about is how do you bring joy to your customers? Okay. Right. Well, well. Wait, 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 hold, on, hold on. Here's the thing. Here's the note. If you learn one thing from tonight's call, it's how do I bring joy to my customers? Okay. If you do not have an answer to that question, then you need to stop everything else that you're doing until you have an answer to that question. Because until you have an answer to that question, and by the way, for you, you, have, you how do you bring joy to your investors? 
How do you bring joy to your distributors? How do you bring joy to your retailers? How do you bring joy to your end using customers? How do you bring joy to employees? How do you bring joy to your partners? Make sense? You need to figure out how you bring joy and they don't all get joy in the same way. For those of you who have to talk to a middle, a middleman, right? Or an intermediary, right? So often we do a couple things with intermediators, right? So if, if we've got the gatekeeper, you need a gatekeeper pitch, right? You're trying to talk to the CEO or the decision maker, but the decision maker has a gatekeeper, right? So what happens? We try to either bulldoze the gatekeeper, right? Or we try to sweet talk the gatekeeper, or we uh, try, you know, crazy things in order to get around the gatekeeper, right? But we need a gatekeeper pitch, right? And so you need a gatekeeper pitch. The gatekeeper pitch is focused on what is the incentive for the gatekeeper. So you don't even think, what is the gatekeeper's job? The gatekeeper's job is to not waste time for the boss. The gatekeeper's job is to make their boss look good. The gatekeeper's uh, objective here is to uh, get a promotion, get a raise, get some more opportunities, get some more assignments or responsibilities here. We need to figure out how we can help people essentially and how we can do it so in a way that brings them a lot of pleasure. Okay, there's two emotions that I want you guys to think about when you think about your pitches. Joy and relief. Okay, so step one, Articulate your value from the prospect's perspective. How do you bring your customer value from their viewpoint, not from your viewpoint, okay? Two is how do you help them to experience joy or relief? And then the third one is offering them an invitation. So the invitation is a call to action essentially, right? But it's done like you invite a friend to the movie or you invite a friend to dinner or you invite a friend to coffee, right? Now. Here's a little thing, and, and Marshall's actually one of these people who is, who's going to give me a hard time about this, and I actually just did the audio version of the book last night, so we're in editing right now. So people are going to give a hard time about this, and I want to kind of clarify one thing. When I say invitation, I think I, I, it's very fine. It's, I'd love to show you a sample of my product if you've got a moment, or I'd love to jump on a Zoom call here and go over the approach, or I'd love to show you how I can deliver on this promise if you've got a moment. People think that this is weak. They think this idea is a soft close, non-presumptive close, right? I'm not driving hard. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on folks. They think that's weak, right? If I were only to do that, you'd be right. If only thing I was going to do is say, hey, if you've got a moment, I'd love to show you something, right? That is weak, super weak sauce. The approach that I'm offering you, though, is three parts of which two come before the invitation. Value from the prospect's perspective connecting emotionally, joy or relief. Once you establish those two concepts, once you establish those two pillars in the mind of your prospect, then you can go for your close, your friendly invitation. You cannot go directly into a friendly invitation. That's not how it works, right? You have to go, you have to establish value and emotional connection. Okay, so for you, what is, you want, you're trying to get, get, get money, right? So. One of the things that I know as well is that you've got to understand, you got to do some research on your customers. You have got to do some competitive analysis. You've got to research the people that you're asking money from. You have to go to their LinkedIn page. If you're asking somebody for money, you need to know what charities that they care about. You need to know a little bit about their story, right? There is not, there's no such thing as a perfect pitch, by the way. I, I, I wish I had it. I wish I could tell you that there was such a thing, but there is no such thing as a perfect pitch. There's no one single perfect pitch that you can give that applies to everybody that is going to get them to open their wallets. It doesn't work like that. Everybody has their own motivation, uh, their own drivers for why they make decisions, right? But there is a commonality between each person, and that is that they all want value from their perspective. They all want to connect emotionally, and they all want to be invited to participate. Nobody wants to be pushed. Lots of people like to buy, right? Nobody likes to be sold to, right? So in this regard too, one thing that I also noticed is that people often say, I'm gonna save you time and money. This is gonna make your life wonderful. Here's one thing that you can do. Articulate how you bring people joy, how to bring your customers joy. And if you offer them a savings of time or money or an amazing experience, right? Or some kind of a health benefit, right? You need to be specific in how you deliver that experience to them. Okay, it's not okay to say I save people time and money or I make you millions, Stephen. No, no, Stephen. 
How do you make the millions? You've got such a giant brain in that head, right? So many things that you can do to help people make money in the apartment business, in the, in the real estate business. You know uh, three dozen things you can do off the top of your head, right? All we need to do is focus on one. Steven, give me one way in which you help customers make money. Give me one little, one little sample here. You're unmuted. T give me one, one example of how you make people money. Um, I'm unmuted finally. Um, it depends on the situation. Are they buying, selling, or holding? Uh, let's say that they are uh, selling. They're selling. I, I drive more traffic to their listing so that it creates an auction like environment and we will drive the price up, uh, generate offers from the most qualified buyers, compress time so that they sell faster to somebody who's actually going to close. So faster, great. All right, so faster compared to what? So faster than, than uh, if they were marketing it themselves. Okay, so if, if I was marketing a property myself, you can help me do better than marketing it myself? Of course. Okay, and so, and is that a thing that you're normally competing against or are you competing against other pros like yourself? Um, my biggest competitor is, is owners selling amongst themselves. Awesome. Perfect. Great. Okay, good. Largest seller in the Miami marketplace. Good. Great. So I need some stats, right? The stat I want to hear is how long does it take the average owner, the owner to sell the property versus how fast you do it? What's um, the stat? It, it could be they never sell it. What's the average? You got to have an average. Average six months. It could six actually, months. that's not true. They might sell it fast, but they're going to sell it for significantly less. They, they, right. they typically will leave money on the table. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So what I need to do from you here is you drive more traffic. How do you drive more traffic to a customer's website or to uh, a customer sale? One way. One way. Um, we have an internal database that blasts their listing to 2,000 agents internally that all have um, buyer needs set up in their computers nationally. So it drives capital from California, from New York, from Chicago, uh, South America, China, um, it broadens the database, not your most likely local buyer to, um, the world essentially. Okay, great. And so that's from your customer brokers, but that's, that's, you said one thing that's start. Gotcha. Here's, here's my point with you guys, with you guys, these pitches that I teach people to do, they're 10 second pitches, right? 30 words. You can say 30 words comfortably in 10 seconds. So that means you get 10 sec, 10 words to focus on value, 10 words to focus on emotion, and 10 words for your invitation. Now you can mix them up a little bit, <laughs> right? But, but essentially you get 30 words. So when I say that your pitch is your most valuable asset, there is no asset that you have that works harder and delivers more value to you than your pitch. Your pitch is the thing that you put on Facebook when you buy an ad. Your pitch is the thing that you do when you actually make your product. Your pitch is the most closely associated um, asset that you have that's tied to your brand. So if you're building a brand, you don't build a brand by Facebook, you don't build a brand by a funnel, you don't build a brand by a workshop or a challenge or any of those things, it's not how you build a brand, okay? You build a brand by creating an experience. A brand is an experience. Technically, it's a promise to deliver an experience, right? Walter Landor, the famous uh, oh gosh, the, the architect of modern branding uh, in, in the globe, uh, is, is basically the branding is a promise. And it's the promise, in, in, as I look at it, of delivering an amazing quality experience, an experience that people will remember. And when they think of you, they think of your brand. But some people say, you need to be on social media because that's branding. That's not true. That's promotion. Promotion is not branding. Although you can deliver a brand through a promotion, a promotion itself is not branding. Facebook advertising is not branding. Instagram posts is not branding. Okay. A funnel is not branding. SEO is not branding. There are two things that you need that will give you an amazing, incredible advantage over competition. One is your pitch. And the second is your brand. Before you can build a world-class brand, you have to have a world-class pitch. The good news is it's not rocket science. I'm not an MIT grad. 
I'm not a genius. I just work real hard. And the secret is simple. Value, emotion, invitation. Okay. Customer's perspective. What do they want? So the first clue for you guys here is when somebody tells you, tells me about, you know, your investor, you're going to talk to an investor, Kathleen, or you're going to talk to an owner, Stephen. The idea is you want to know ahead of time how you're going to make their life joyful, how you're going to bring them joy, right? And then you need to be very specific in how you promise to deliver that in a way that sounds novel, okay? It needs to sound novel. So what I'd like to, I'd love to do here is, 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 am I just blabbing? You guys, is this interesting to you? I don't know if we're, if we're getting some, okay, good. And if you guys have questions on anything here, we can open up for some questions. If you got some questions here. Okay. All right. So Carolina, is this making sense to you as far as this approach here? Is this, a, is, is this old, old stuff or are you getting some, some, some value from this? Okay. All right. Dynamite. Okay. So. So now what I want you guys to do is think about how you bring people joy. I'd love for you guys to type in the chat how you bring a customer joy. One, and by the way, you've got 10 seconds, 30 words. That means this is good. Within constraints, 10 seconds is a very big constraint. You might think I've got three minutes. I got, I got 30 seconds even. No, you've got 10. Actually, you only have two and a half seconds in most cases to compel and connect emotionally with somebody. So how did I come up with this idea? It's not out of my rear end. It's not a, a frame of mind. It's not an insight. It's data. YouTube did a giant data analysis on millions of people going to YouTube and clicking on videos on YouTube. And what they discovered during this data analysis is that 20% of the people who clicked on a video, on a thumbnail, on a, either on a thumbnail or on a, on a headline, abandoned the video within the first 10 seconds. So think about this for a second. And it wasn't clickbait, in case you guys are thinking it's clickbait. It wasn't clickbait. It had to do with there's so many alternatives. If I'm looking for something on YouTube and I click on something and if they don't immediately tell me what it is that I'm looking for, if I don't feel confident that I'm in the right spot, I'm going to leave because there's lots of alternatives. And here's a situation to you guys. Think about your business. Go onto YouTube and type in exactly what you do on YouTube. See how many other people are out there doing what you're doing whether you're asking for money, whether you're selling real estate, whether you're selling whatever. Type it on YouTube, I'd be curious. Go onto YouTube, search exactly what you do, see how many hundreds of other people are out there doing the same exact thing seemingly that you are. What you'll find, the majority of the people that you'll find here is that they do not close with their open. They draw it out real slow. They try to get people hooked over a period of time to learn more about them. They do not give people what they want. If you guys want to immediately change your business, for the most part, all you need to do is take the end closing that you have, focus it around the customer and bring it right up front. People often don't like to talk about the cost of their product. They often don't like to talk about the terms of the product. They don't like doing any of those things, all right? But I assure you, they definitely don't like to do it after listening to you for 30 minutes blabber. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, if, so if you don't like talking to people about the how much it costs to do this, what's involved, Phil, what's happening, baby? If you don't like talking to folks about, about the cost, the price, that makes you eek and worry, it means you don't have enough value established. You're not sold on your pitch. If you're worried about talking about how much it costs, you know, it's, I get a 6% commission on my real estate sales. Wow. That's interesting. How do you do that? Oh, I'd love to tell you about it. Let me, let me give you, hey, thanks. I'd love to tell you about it, right? Uh, my, point, my point is, is that if you focus on the hard discussion up front, it forces you to focus on the value of what you're bringing. So David, tell me, give me an example. David, David Belmar, what is it that you, 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 you're involved with? What, what's your business? And I'm sorry, let me, let me, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, what's your business? I'm actually in the coffee business. I'm actually an importer and I'm a roaster here in Miami. And I love we, it. We, um, in addition to do that whole thing of importing and, and, and roasting, uh, I personally visit businesses so that we can actually offer them the services. So I have various pitches. I love uh, it. I love it. G give me, give me, how do you bring joy? Give me a customer type that you have and how do you bring them joy? Well, I'll tell you what I did lately. So I, I, I put my eyes on this guy about four, five months ago. 
and I've been telling him basically three things. I love your brand. Allow me to, to get an opportunity to be with you. Let me help you increase your sales and let me help you educate your people. That's it. It's not very, you know, um, basically what I tell them is that, that I can actually increase their sales. I can educate basically their, their people and I can reduce cost. That's what I actually normally pitch to them. I love it. I love it. All right. So let, 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 I see some opportunity here. Would you, would you be, would you be open to a moment of, of a little one-on-one -on -one coaching? Sure. My man. Okay, good. All right. So David, you help people make more money in the coffee business here. Give me one example of how you do that. Basically we do it based on quantification. So we actually quantify how much basically shots of espresso you get out of one pound. And then we basically make sure that there are no waste. Same with actually preparing milk. So we tell you exactly how many jars of milk you can actually make out of one gallon of milk. And then from that, we basically do what's the cost based on you know, what they sell and what the profit margin is. And then that's basically how I bring it to them on the table. Okay, so here's, you, you brought up a good point, you guys, and this is really essential. There is no point in spending a, a minute with me if you guys aren't focused on increasing your profits, your actual margins right? And the point here is that you can have two products that are exactly the same. But if you have a better pitch, if your pitch is, is, is more focused on value, more focused on emotional connection, and more inviting, you can charge more for the same exact product. It will imbue branding elements into that pitch that will, will connect more deeply with your prospects. Okay. And so when you talk about David, the idea that you can measure how many shots that they can produce in espresso or the analytics tied to how much milk, uh, you can give them some processes and some data, right? So you can actually, you apply, you show them how to use the data within their environment to help them increase their profit margins. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. So you can review their processes to help them establish opportunities for increasing margin based upon the current methodology that or the current process they use to make their product. That's correct. Okay. Doesn't that sound more specific than I help you make money? Yes. Right. right? And it's not crazy. Look, you just all saw it. That's how you do it. Right. So, so you, so what I'd love to say to you here is, uh, you know, if I have you on the phone is we have a way in which to measure your shots which we can analyze your shot profile during the course of the day to help you increase your returns on your product or to help you increase your project market. There's, 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 if you, let me, let, let's, let's practice for a second. So you're, you're, you're on the other end. I'm calling you. I'm David. You pick up the phone. Hello. 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 Answer the phone. You can answer the phone. What are you doing? It's a short call. All right. So, Hey, uh, this is David here. I checked out your, your facility. It's such a beautiful facility. I've, I've got one question here regarding your shot pulling, if you have a moment. Okay, go right ahead. I love it. Great. So I just pitched him instantly. Did you see what just happened? That was a pitch. That was a pitch. I didn't say, if you have a moment, I'd love to show you how I get more money. I went right into a very specific question that you had to ask, what the hell are you talking about? Right. So I have a program here that help you analyze your, your shot pools that can help you increase your profit margin. If you have a moment, I'd love to tell you about it. Okay. Tell me more about it. It's kind of interesting. Great. Exactly. Right. All right. So what we can do is we spend, we, we have a, we have a system that we develop. Uh, it's actually, it took us about three years to put it together here, but it helps roasters analyze the shots during the course of the day. And through that shot analysis process, we can determine how many shots that you pull and how to increase your profit margin specifically as a result of that shot, that shot analysis here. I, I love to, if do you, can you just give me a sense of how many shots you guys are pulling during the course of the day? We have no idea. I, it's the first time that I heard about this. Oh, you, so you, right, how many, how many espressos do you shoot, do you produce a day? All that I care about is just basically, you know, how cheap I can get the coffee because I don't, I, I just want to move coffee. And I didn't know. Oh, so you're a roaster. You're a roaster. You're, you're not a no, cafe. No. You're a roaster. No, 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 no. No, I am actually a coffee shop. You're a coffee you're shop. A okay. 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 Gotcha. <laughs> I, I should know if I'm the roaster or not for crying out loud. Here, I understand here, but you're so sophisticated. I, I can appreciate that. So, so how many coffees do you sell during the course of a day out of curiosity? 
well, there's people that sell basically, you know, a hundred, some say, you know, 50 other sale, like, you know, this guy that I was able to land after these five months, uh, he sells basically about 500 shots of espresso every day. Perfect. Good. Good. So you, Once David, so, all right, so now what I want to do is based upon knowing that somebody shoot has 500 shots a day or 500 coffees a day, you might be able to come up with a very rough average calculation of what kind of value you might be able to bring to that person. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along here, right? But I'm wondering if you have a, an idea based upon how many shots how, or how many espresso somebody pulls during the course of the day or how many coffees they serve, with, is it possible or is it possible that you can have an idea of what kind of savings you can give them based upon how many coffees that they sell during the course of the day? Yeah, the, the, there is a way. There is okay. a way because Normally I can tell them, you know, you know, you're supposed to be uh, profiting X amount of money based on what I saw on the menu of your, of your coffee. If you were getting your coffee at this cost and I know more or less what the cost is because I know the competitors, what they're selling it for. Right. I love this. Look, and th think about this for a second. Look at the value that you're able to bring instantly at the very beginning of the call with that approach. Right. So a lot of people, and look, this is not, I'm not begrudging anybody. I was not the best pitch person at the beginning when I started here. I'm not, this is not about you. I'm just saying, look, there's a lot of different approaches to coming up with a pitch. Hey, I'd love to show you a way that you can make more money if you got a moment. Or if I could put an extra $10,000 in your pocket here, would it be worth three minutes of your time? Right. People, people pitch like that. Okay. But that's not really a pitch. That is a sell. And what I want you to do is move from a selling mindset to a service mindset. Probably the most lucrative thing that you guys can do when you get on a call with somebody is focus on the service mindset, right? And how do you do that? How can you provide the person on the other end of that line with a bit of service, with a bit of value instantly, right? And if you could just find out how many coffees they serve during the course of the day and give them a calculation of what their return should be, right? Or what their ROI should be based upon that, that would be worth me spending that 15 seconds with you or 45 seconds with you. And it would also help me transfer authority to you as the expert, right? If you could establish being an expert in 10 seconds, how many people would love to be able to establish themselves as an expert 10 seconds into their phone call? Only me, only me. Okay, very good. Anyway, so my point to you here is that think about this calculation that David can be doing. He knows already, based upon how many coffees are served during the course of the day, how much money he can help them save. So if I'm you, and there's so many different ways you can make money. And Steven, same thing for you. And, and Kathleen, same thing for you. I don't know which one you want to work with, although I'll give you a clue for this, right? But your, your objective should be show them, prove to them immediately how you bring them value. Hey, uh, David, quick question for you here. I, I have a, a, a coffee roasting analysis program here. And if I could find out how many coffees you serve during the course of the day, I can tell you within a range of about 10% or so here, what your ROI should be on those coffees. If you have a moment, I just love to know how many, how many coffees you serve during the course of the day. That's awesome. Right? That's a pitch, baby. That is a pitch. And it's service focused. How do I, how do I say, no. Impossible. Wait, you've got this. You know what I should be at? Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And then boom, you, you start the conversation. And you start immediately into service. Immediately you're in service. Right? Immediately you're the expert. Right? And by the way, it does not matter how long that company has been in business. Right? It does not matter how much money that company makes. It does not matter because everybody wants to know where they're at. Everybody wants to know where they should be. Everybody wants to know opportunity. What is the opportunity you're presenting to me? Okay. All right. So we're at an hour right now here. I don't, but David, was that helpful for you? Terrific. Love it. And, and, and so you guys just need to pick one thing, right? Pick one thing that you do. If you guys have a box, for instance, you guys, anybody sells boxes, anybody sells keyboards, right? In 10 seconds, all I can do is talk about this one button. This one button, 
Oh my gosh, this one button is going to bring you joy because by applying this button here, it actually fuses with a neural link in your cerebellum that actually focuses on joy. I'd love to show you how it works if you got a minute. That's a pitch, you guys, okay? You don't have time to say, look, this keyboard has 11 different buttons. They all have a very sophisticated way in which to operate them. Uh, I'd love to sit down for 10 minutes if you got 10 minutes here and show you a demo. That's not a pitch. All right, that is a presentation. That's a dissertation, okay? You got time to focus on the one killer app, if you will. What's the one killer thing? I can tell you, if you tell me how many coffees you sell during the course of the day, how close you are to the industry average of being on the high end margin of your business. That is killer. That's killer, right? So Steven, we need to do something like that for you. You already know I've got three different customers I'm gonna talk to. I want you to pick the killer delivery, the thing that, that absolutely just is devastating to them once they find out that you can do this for them. I want to know what that is for each person. And here's the clue, what to pick for everybody. Here, ready? What's the thing that you make the most profit on? What? Yes. What is the thing that you make the most profitable? Uh, what's the thing you make the most profit on? Not what people need the most. Not what's the coolest. Not what, not what's the newest. Where do you make the most money? And by the way, how you determine your, 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 your profit is, is important too. It's, it should be a combination of volume, right? Contributing to your top line activities, right? We're not going to get into a big deep discussion on that. So assuming that you guys want to sell your most profitable product, that's what I'm talking about here, right? So what is the product or service that you offer that is the most lucrative to you? that you want to sell all day long if you could. If you could just sell this thing all day long and do only this, that's what I want you to lead with. Then focus on how that brings joy to people. So don't focus on the top thing and the second thing and then the third thing, focus on one thing. Because people cannot contain more than one thing within that 10 second period of time. They can't give you enough attention. They're already scattered as it is. Just picking up the phone, they're already starting thinking about other things. Who's this person? How do I get them off the phone? I'm busy. What's going on? What's happening? Right? You get one chance. What's the one button that you've got that makes life joyful? Then you have to prove how it works. It's not enough to say that I make you more money as a, as a cafe. I need to say that if I, I know that by how many coffees you serve, I can tell you your bean profit margin during the course of the day. That's specific. And if you're specific, you're believable. If you're general, you're not believable. This is the other key thing, you guys. General comments in a pitch are never believed. Imagine somebody giving you the pitch that you give other people. Hey, you got a minute. I love, if you got five minutes, I'd love to tell you about what I'm doing. No, I don't have five minutes. Go away. Right? This works for investor pitch decks. This works for key customers. This works for political campaigns. It works for, for board of directors meetings. This works for on packaging. This works on taglines. This works in pitch competitions. There is nowhere that this doesn't work. Whether you're selling a dollar product uh, on a retail uh, counter or a hundred million dollar fund, it does not matter. You apply the same concepts. Okay. So, Peter, I'm going over here. I don't know what you want to do here on the hour. You want to open up for questions or, or something? What, what do you want to do? Well, sir, uh, first of all, you know, we still have a person that wants to kind of uh, uh, bring it out to his Carolina Marine. She asked me for some time about if it's possible to listen to her a little bit. Let's go, Carolina. I'd be, I'd be happy to. Let's give her the opportunity. And uh, if after that, if it's possible to tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, more about the mindset of uh, pitching and how it works so people, they have a better idea and everybody's going to be on the same page. You, you got it. You got it. And actually, before we go into Carolina, so the book, by the way, I'm not even in launch form yet on, on the book here. And, and, and Peter uh, and Tony were kind enough to invite me here to the growth mastermind group here, but my book close with your open is coming out in two weeks. 
Uh, if you're interested to sign up and get early access to the call, you can go to pitchfreaks.com. That's pitchfreaks.com and get on the list here to secure your copy uh, of the, the, the new book, Close With Your Open here. It's everything that I know distilled into uh, a less than, uh, it's, it's an hour long audio, but dense and so fun. So, uh, and we, it's, it's basically 25 years of, of pitching at, at a very high level uh, distilled uh, into a framework that anybody can follow. So if your kids are running for student council, you can apply this approach here to get them to be president of the school. If they're trying to get a scholarship, you can use this approach here to help them get ahead. It, you can apply this on lemonade stands uh, or for president of the United States. It does not matter. It works across all these different, different channels. All right, so uh, pitchfreaks.com. All right, Carolina. Thank you so much for all this. It's, uh, it's bringing a lot of value to us and I really appreciate your time. I'm wondering if my pitch brings value and connects emotionally to my clients. I have to add an invitation, but here we go. Uh, so Rewire, my company leader, facilitates synchronized leadership in companies to serve their customers' profitability while enhancing employee engagement and productivity. That in a nutshell is what I do through seminars and um, leadership trainings and assessments. Great, terrific, all right, good. So, so really focus on, on one thing that you do that brings people more money, right? Remember, if, you're, if your pitch here is I can help you make more money, you have to change your pitch instantly. Nobody on this call is allowed anymore to say, I help you make more money. You have to show people how you make money. So give me one way in which you apply your process to help people make money. Well, if I can help the executive team in a company increase their communication and be more productive, they can have more productivity in the company. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I, you're trying, you're tricking me. You're tricking me. That, that's not good enough, Carolina. Increasing productivity is not proof. That's just a different way to say I make you more money. Okay, how do you increase productivity? Specifically, one way you do it. Right, by helping them communicate better. Oh, okay, communication is also a trick. Okay. How do you help them communicate better? By helping them learning how uh, they how they're wired, how they like their personality assessments. So like if they know each other better within an executive team, then everything is flows more easily in terms of decisions, in terms of meetings, like knowing each other's weaknesses and uh, strengths and all that stuff. Okay, so you help executive teams have a, a shortcut in language that helps them get their points across and, and connect more deeper, faster. Correct. There you go. Okay. That's a pitch. Got it. Make Getting sense? More specific. Mm -hmm. More specific, right? And so you have, a, you, have, you have a course or you have a product that helps your executive team work more closely together with a, like, almost like a, a shortcut in language, right? It's almost like a, a quick language to help people get on, onto the same page quickly. And as a result of that, they can move faster. So if you're trying to get your product to market, imagine being able to get your product to market faster because your whole team speaks the same language. We reduce the amount of confusion with regards to, to just simple uh, personality types by getting people on the same page. And by using our approach here, we're able to help you cut across difficulties and personality so you can get to the core of the communications here and you can get your product to market faster. If you got a moment, I'd love to tell you how it works. Okay, wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Something like that. Yeah. Does that well, no, okay, so look, we never met before. I don't know you. You don't have any, you don't have to say anything nice to me here. Was that helpful for you? Does well, that, it was. that you can use? It was because it's true. What I offer, it's very broad and it doesn't, you know, in, in, 50, in 10 seconds, it's, it's hard to, to bring everything that I do together. But the way you mentioned it, you, you got very specific, starting the language, getting all on the same page. And it does definitely help. Love it. Perfect. Good. I'm, I'm glad it's helped. But look, the key thing here is that if you're helping people, if you're teaching people something, and there are some teachers on this call, 
What is the thing that you teach that transforms people to be more effective at what they do? And how specifically do they become more effective? And what is the result of that increased effectiveness? So it can, can you get people to produce things faster? If so, how much faster? Also, why is it faster? Right? Some people, you don't want to have things that are too good to be true. Right? And so pitches that are too good to be true are, we all think they're, they're, they're phony. They're phony baloney. Right? So the whole idea here is you want to have a pitch that is true. It's too true to be obvious. To be, it's, it's, too, it's so true, it's obvious is what I mean. We want your pitch to end up thinking, oh, it's so obvious, of course I need that. I need that. Mm -hmm. Of course I need that. So if you think about your clients, your clients here are large companies here. There are a lot of teams, big problems in communications. You cannot say, don't, please don't start anything like communications is the most important skill set that any customer, any, any company, forget that. We all know that. It's cliche. If you're about to say a cliche term that is completely obvious, scrap it because it's obvious. Yeah. You've got 10 seconds. You have to be non-obvious. Great right? stuff. Great stuff. Right? This is how you pitch freak it, you guys. Anybody, it's very easy to be ordinary. It's very easy not to get attention. It's hard to get attention. Think about all the money that you guys spend on your funnels, on your advertising, on your training to get a lead right? What happens is when you've got a sales team and they're churning through calls and they're not using this pitch freaks approach. Can you imagine how much money is being wasted by just running through calls with a sales mindset, no focus on service on the other side, simply trying to close deals. I'm going to, I'm going to close this deal. All I need to do is can, do you got something for me? Do you got something for me? Do you got something for me? Do you got, that's not how it works. You guys it's, it's, I've got something for you. How can I help you? I'm here. You're going to thank me for this phone. Could you imagine starting a phone call by saying, you, you're going to think this is crazy, but in 35 seconds, you're going to thank me for making this call. <laughs> who's, who's ever had a pitch like that, that you ever heard? Have you ever heard a pitch like that? Never, never. It's free. Okay. So imagine starting, a, how strong is that? Thank you for picking up the phone. In 35 seconds, you are going to thank me. You might even name your firstborn child after me. I don't know if you have a child already, but it's certainly the next child, you might want to name them after me after these 35 seconds is over. It, do you follow what I'm saying? That's strong. You might name your coffee company after me. It might be David Belmar Coffee. You're, you're, you're going to at least name some kind of coffee, uh, you know, some affogato drink after me or something like that. My point here is you've got, when you've got something that's huge value, by the way, for folks who have a little bit of queasiness making sales, and a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm surprised how many entrepreneurs are a little queasy about making sales, this is gold for you guys. It's gold because if you get out of the sales mindset and into the service mindset, you're still gonna get to a close. By the way, I said you had to have a call to action. You had to have an invitation to learn more so you can go into a demo. So it's not good enough just to offer value and emotion and stop there because then you're not selling. You're just making somebody feel good, right? You've got to invite them to learn more as they learn more. And by the way, you are always wanting to earn more time from people, earn that time. You earn that time in your first 10 seconds. And then they give you that 10 seconds. You want to earn another 10 seconds and you want to keep earning time until you get to the point where you can close. So, so, Caroline, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, you know, obviously, by the way, I'm going to be doing a whole coaching program on Close With Your Open for folks that may be interested in it. If you get onto the email list to secure your copy of Close With Your Open, the book here, you guys will also be first in line here for the actual live coaching program from Close With Your Open. If you are going to create a logo, would it make sense to have your pitch right before you spend a penny working on your logo? I'll give you a good example. Our good friend, Tim Lane. Everybody know Tim Lane? National kickboxing champion, huge 10X, 10X guy. Tim Lane was going to create a podcast. He is a national kickboxing champion. Tim called me and he's been a pitch freak for a while. Tim said, hey, 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 Tone, I'm going to be uh, having a podcast here. I'm going to call it the Tim Lane Show. What do you think? 
I say, Tim, that's a horrible name. Don't ever name your podcast the Tim Lane Show. It doesn't make no sense. Well, what, what are you talking about? I said, Tim, you are a championship boxer, kickboxer. You should call it kicking it with Tim Lane. Because he's going to have all his friends on the podcast with him. He said, oh my gosh, this is, of course. He's a national kickboxing championship champion. He's got belts. He's serious. Kicking it with Tim Lane, kicking it, kickboxing, kicking it, having fun, hanging out with your friend, right? He changed his name to, to kicking it with Tim Lane. You can go check it out on pod, any podcast where, wherever good podcasts are sold. By the way, as a result of changing his name, he got, uh, what's the name of that group? Tribe Called Quest. Mupo knows this. Tribe Called Quest gave him the rights to use the song, Can I Kick It? as the title song of his podcast. Now, if it was the Tim Lane podcast, there'd be no reason to go to Tribe Called Quest and get that name. But when you come up with your pitch and you develop a brand concept that is strong and emotional, everything builds upon that and makes everything stronger. So if your pitch is strong, your logo is strong. If your logo is strong, your branding is strong. If your branding is strong, your copywriting is strong. If your copywriting is strong, your advertising is strong. If your advertising is strong, your conversion is strong. Your, your conversions are strong. Your calls are stronger. What do you think that's going to do your profits? Stronger profits, better profits, bigger profits, right? All that comes from getting your pitch right. Pitchfreaks.com. Make sure that you get on this list to secure, to secure your copy of the book, pitchfreaks.com. All right. So uh, let's see here. Anything else for us? What, what can I do? Any, I'm going to open this up for Q&A here. I, I don't know what you want to do. I love you guys. Thanks for being on here on the call on Sunday. Here we got the NBA game going on. So much activity here. But you guys, champions. You're all champions. Love seeing you guys. Kathleen, you got a question here. Yes, dear. Oh, let me unmute you. Okay. Um, so I'm a little overwhelmed right now. <laughs> So, um, Michelle Mupo, that never happens. I don't want to start with six pictures. I just want to start with one. Okay. And um, so, I, 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 so how I, I'm going to go right to pitchfreak.com, but is there, is it possible to sort of work with you like one on one or is that a, an option? Because absolutely, absolutely. I, I help, I help folks here do one on one coaching here. That's, that's, I'm happy to do that. So, okay. if you go to pitchfreaks.com, send me your email, uh, Kathleen, uh, on that here, uh, and, and we'll get back to you. And you can also reach me at Antonio at pitchfreaks.com. Antonio at pitchfreaks.com. Just put in the subject line coaching. And that's okay. not a problem. Happy to talk with you about that. David, did you have a question for me? Okay. Are, you, are you talking? To, okay. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. All right. So let's see here. What else, you guys? Phil, happy to see you on the call, my man. Phil, give it, tell us what's going on with you, Phil, real quick. I want to do a catch because you're doing a mastermind call, I think, right? Hey, am I on? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Good to be here. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, taking everything in that Pitch Freak's telling us, um, lots to learn tonight. But for me personally, as you can see, building a little bit of my brand, uh, my brand's always about growing yourself and learning. I personally got to go on an awesome journey. Someone gave me a journey that learned how to basically learn a lot more, get awareness of yourself and come out the other end, a much more better person with a life filled with love, joy, and happiness. My goal is to spread that to as many people as I can. And then one of the key points that I started with is an awesome mastermind I've kicked off here in the last couple months called MindWorks. And that's what I'm doing right now. I love it. I love it. I love it. And where to find out? 10 yourself.com You got it. You guys My go man. there. You'll find out about everything about me. My man. Thank My you, man. Sir. Okay. And David Belmar, where do people find out about your coffee? You're unmuted. You're muted, David. Where do people find out your coffee? I think he's on mute. Maybe I'm on mute. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, any last questions here? I don't know what you, you want to just open up for questions, Peter, or, or what, what do you want to do? Sure. Definitely. Uh, we can uh, wait for questions. If anybody wants to ask them, please do so. But meanwhile, if you, uh, Kathleen, she, I think she has another question, but, um, uh, if it's possible, just to kind of wrap up the whole concept of uh, the pitch, how, you know, like, what are the right questions to ask yourself before you're going to move forward? Sounds great. Okay, so if I, if, I, if I were to start this call and I had just a few minutes to teach you what to do, it, I'd say number one thing to do is switch from sales mindset to service mindset. That's the number one thing you can do to increase your actual sales, which sounds counterintuitive. You might be of the frame of mind that I have to be harder selling 
Not true. Not true. By the way, people, if you have the choice between providing joy or relief, focus on joy. People who spend a lot of money want to spend it on people that bring them joy. People don't like spending people money with people that just talk about problems all day long. They want to talk about solutions. They want to have joy. So if you can figure out a way to offer your pitch in a way that brings people joy, this is magic for you guys. Because think about it. You want to hang out with people that bring you joy. You want to spend time with people that bring you joy, right? The same thing should hold true for your customers, right? Your customers should become your friends. That's how you build a brand. That's how you build relationships, right? If you're focused on just transacting something, right? That's not going anywhere. It's not sustainable. Look, you can close through a sales mindset. You can close through high pressure tactics. You can, of course you can do that, right? The question here is people are going to get tired of you. People, once fun, if somebody offers the same thing and they have a good time doing it, they're actually willing to pay a premium to go with the person that brings them joy. Pixar, I did a tour of Pixar not too long ago. Well, I'm sorry, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. And they actually said, the top, the, one of the top people over at Pixar said that if there's two people that are being hired for a job at Pixar, and you guys all know Pixar is like the number one animation house on the planet, right? If there are two people applying for the same exact job at Pixar, and one has demonstrably superior skills, but a bad attitude, arrogant attitude, difficult to deal with. And the other one has mediocre skills, but is a pleasure to work with. My old frame of mind, and I'm going to acknowledge this for me because I've made a huge amount of mistakes myself thinking wrongly. It's like, if I'm the best, you're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> no, not true. People will not deal with you if they don't want to deal with it. It doesn't matter how good you are at what you're doing. My, my point is they will hire the person with the lesser skill set that's more enjoyable to work with. So even the best animation house on the planet doesn't actually need to have the most competent animator. They need to have the best team, the best experience for the team. People just want to work with people. You think about actors or actresses that don't get a lot of work because they're difficult to deal with. Look, there's so many other actors and actresses out there. We'll just get another one. You know what I mean? There's no point in being a prima donna, right? Or, or a prima don, <laughs> whatever you want to do, right? My point here is that if you can focus on joy, look, I'm so happy. I'm pitching the hell out of you guys. Come to pitchfreaks.com. I'd love to connect you with what we're doing. Right. But I can do it from a joyful place because I want you guys to win. Right. And I'll focus on bringing you guys value. How can you do the same thing with your customers? Be specific, be service minded, articulate value from their perspective, explain how you feel, how you bring them joy and invite them to learn more about your product. What is the thing that you would like them to learn more about? Because if they were to learn about it, they're going to be a customer. They're going to want to set up a meeting. They're going to want to sign a contract. What is that thing? Write down that thing. What is the thing that I want my customer to ask me to learn more about? And I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek from the book, by the way. There's something called the De Niro nod. You guys, everybody know what the De Niro nod is? Anybody hear about the De Niro nod? Okay. The De Niro nod. Mupo, are you ready for this? Okay. The De Niro nod. So everybody goes sees, knows who De Niro is, Robert De Niro here. When you watch De Niro in the movie and he's agreeing with another character in the movie, sometimes he'll do something like this. That's the De Niro nod. A little bit. You like this idea? A little bit. A little bit. That's a De Niro nod. Now, by the way, there are like a dozen different De Niro nods that I've scientifically evaluated. There's the uh, curious De Niro. There's the impressed De Niro. And there's a whole bunch of other ones. My point to you guys is you guys are gunning for that De Niro nod. And you can even hear it on the phone sometimes, too right? You want to get that De Niro nod. That De Niro nod means you've got permission to go into a demo. You've got permission to demonstrate what it is that you can do. So in that first 10 seconds, your objective is to get the De Niro nod. No De Niro, no De Niro. Capiche? Okay. Dynamite. 
All right, you guys. So uh, I hope that you guys had fun on today's call here. Uh, if you'd like to learn more here or get on the email list for other activities, our coaching programs, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'd love to have you guys involved with that. I uh, appreciate you so much. Go to pitchfreaks.com, pitchfreaks.com with an S, uh, or you can send me an email, antonio at pitchfreaks.com, uh, and I'd be happy to continue this conversation uh, conversation further here. So thank you so very much for, for joining today. And thank you, Peter, for for, for, for inviting me and, and, and Tony for, for making this available. Uh, Antonio, thank you very much for coming. You are just amazing, and I appreciate you as a human being, first of all, and then as an entrepreneur, as an illuminated mind to say like that and i think you're just you're that person that uh, everybody needs in their life uh, to be there and watching their shoulder so to make sure we don't do mistakes so uh this being said you know i really want everybody to thank you for for joining us tonight and just to remind them we have an amazing uh next week we're gonna have mr chris which is a top 5000 he's also part of the 10x group and on the 18th, we're going to have Ken Honda. I don't know if you're familiar with Ken Honda. He is a multimillionaire, international person, a VIP of the VIP of the VIP, been in all, all the shows, and he's going to talk about happy money, a different concept of attracting money. And we're going to have him on the 18th, and everybody, including yourself, Antonio, we will be honored to have you there and to listen to Mr. Ken to see his brilliance uh, about and he's also by the way a very successful um writer he sold millions and millions of his uh, books and he has some secrets that i want to find out how he managed to get it so this being said thank you very much for all to be here i wish you a amazing 10x week and uh let's grow together let's thank you very much have a wonderful evening and a beautiful week Thank you. Bye, you guys.